My brother goes to a different pornographic movie every day. Do hey, people go to pornographic movies? I got his hands in his lap. I go all the time. You know the kind of movie we're talking about, right? You got to be 18 or accompanied by a trench coat to get into these things? And let's face it, it takes some low-life degenerates to even want to go see pornographic movies like, you know. I rent them and take them home, so I do. <laughs> I don't want nobody buttering my popcorn, I'll tell you that right now. I went to a pornographic movie one time, very entertaining film, very educational film. First pornographic ever made in, in three-dimensional. Not a very pretty picture. Pornographic movie in 3D, I sat too close to the screen. Some guy had an orgasm and I was like, Duck! I'm taking these glasses off, man. You can have all the popcorn. I don't want this shit. So I'm watching this film. I noticed the guy in front of me sitting next to an inflatable doll. I was thoroughly disgusted. I could not believe a man would bring an inflatable doll to a pornographic film. <laughs> I grabbed my sheep and I said, honey. <laughs> Let's get the flock out of here. This is a bad movie. I can a lot of motels now offer rated X movies. Now motels, they call it closed circuit TV. Which is the title that scares me. It should scare you folks too, I'll tell you why. It's like if I'm watching a movie in room six, how do I know that I'm not the movie in room seven? Wouldn't it be embarrassing the next day in the parking lot, like, hey, aren't you Bronco Bob? <laughs> How'd you get that lamp up your ass so fast? <laughs> it was a miracle. I swear to God, it was a miracle. <laughs> I'd like to meet the person who writes pornographic movies. There's a sick individual. <laughs> How do you write a pornographic movie? There's no plot to these things. There's no storyline. We're not going anywhere. Example. A lady goes into Kmart to buy a toothbrush and figures, while I'm here, why don't I blow somebody? <laughs> Never happens when I'm in Kmart. I'd be there right now. <laughs> Attention, Kmart shoppers. We're having a blue light special. Six inches or less in the express lane, please. Hey, he's writing a check and that's bullshit, man. I got kicked out of Kmart. Kicked out of Kmart. They called me up when they said, we're sorry, John. <laughs> but you have insufficient funds to cover these checks. I said, I know that. <laughs> if I had enough funds to cover those checks, I'd have paid cash. <laughs> It takes too many brains to figure that one out, did it? That's why you work at a Kmart, butthead. You ever get these guys' beneficial finance call you up? They're major leaguer pain in the asses. These guys are dedicated. They'll call you up at 7 o'clock in the morning. John, we just don't know what we're going to do. Either we have a payment in here by the 30th, or we just don't know what we're going to do. What's beneficial finance worth? A couple billion dollars? I don't come up with 2850 by Friday? This guy don't know what the fuck he's gonna do. So I gave him a couple ideas. I said, at the end of the month, I have a raffle. The bills go into a hat. The ones that get picked, they get paid. You keep fucking around, you're not even gonna get in a hat next month. The only person with the worst credit to me is my brother. He's a financial disaster. My brother needs a co-signer when he pays cash. <laughs> you call my brother up, he has an answer phone, a phone mate. You call him up and his phone mate goes like, Okay, this is Tommy. I'm really sorry about the checks, all right? Don't be sneaking around the bushes because I'm not home. I swear to God. Dude. 
tries to borrow money from me. He says, John, lend me a hundred bucks. I swear to God. I'm thinking, what kind of collateral is this? How often do you see a bank manager at his desk going, well, I'll tell you, you got no real or personal property. You swear to God. As long as you don't make it cross my heart, I think you got a deal here, asshole. But he was a tough guy. My brother played college football. I remember one time the coach, he told me the coach pulled him in there and the coach was pissed off because the team was losing three games in a row. And the coach told all the guys, he goes, you know, you guys ain't as tough as the team I had last year. The team I had last year was tough. The coach unzipped his pants, grabbed a snapping turtle, <laughs> put it on the head of his dick and just let it hang there. <laughs> Snap a turtle just chewing. <laughs> the whole team was just sitting there going, Jesus. <laughs> then the coach took his fingers, poked the snap the turtle in the eyes, snap the turtle fell off. He said, Now can you guys do that? The quarterback says, No, I can't do that. <laughs> Linebacker said, I can't do that. <laughs> The tight end says, I can do it, but you don't have to poke me in the eyes. <laughs> this guy walks into a bar. He says, Bartender, I want me a shot of 12 year old scotch. Bartender says, who's this fucking asshole? He don't know his ass from a hole in the ground. Pours him just bar scotch, gives it to him. Guy takes a shot, throws it in his mouth, goes, this is bullshit. I want 12-year-old scotch. This is bar scotch. Bartender says, okay. Figures he tests him again, gives him a little shot of three-year-old scotch, takes it back over there. Guy grabs a little shooter, throws it down, goes, that's three-year-old scotch. I want 12-year-old scotch. Bartender pours him another shot of nine-year-old scotch. Gives it to him. Like, this nine-year-old scotch, I want 12-year-old scotch. This is the last fucking time I'm asking. <laughs> Bartender pours him a little glass of 12-inch. 12 12-inch. 12 <laughs> 12-year-old scotch. Guy throws it down, says, thank you, sir, it's very smooth. This old drunk at the end of the bar just swaggers up. He says, man, that's pretty good. Try a shot of this stuff. But guy grabs this little shot glass, throws it down, he goes, tastes like piss. He says, it is. How old am I? <laughs> Superman is flying around Metropolis one day, flying over all these buildings. All of a sudden, he sees Wonder Woman completely naked on top of a building, just writhing around and moving her hips and just groaning and moaning. He said, fuck it. <laughs> he flies down high from the sky, lands on top of Wonder Woman and just gives it to her. <laughs> he finishes, he rolls over, he says, hey, Wonder Woman, what do you think about that? <laughs> she says, I thought it was great. I don't think the Invisible Man cared for it too much. <laughs> There's this guy and his partner, they're out fishing one day and the guy just got back from his honeymoon. And his friend says, how was your honeymoon? He said, pretty good, did a lot of fishing. He said, well, didn't you fuck? <laughs> Miss Nah, she had gonorrhea, so I did a lot of fishing. You know how I like to fish. <laughs> he said, why didn't you just roll her over and stuff? Miss Nah, she had diarrhea, man. And, uh, <laughs> and you know how I like to fish and stuff, so I just fished. He said, well, did you get a blowjob or anything? No, nah, she had pyrrhea, man. And, uh, <laughs> and anyways, you know I like to fish and stuff. He said, what the hell did you marry her for? He says, well, she had worms, and you know I like to fish. You know, I had... <laughs> Yo, 
be telling that tomorrow bullshit. <laughs> there was this older guy, then his wife was an older woman, and they're in bed, and all of a sudden he woke up in the middle of the night and says, Honey, I'm hungry, I'm gonna get me something to eat in the fridge. He goes to the refrigerator, she, he says, There's nothing in here to eat. She says, I made some pudding. Is it hard yet? He says, it's as hard as my fucking dick. <laughs> she said, then pour me a glass, would you? <laughs> there was this gun couple on their honeymoon. And the man was a real macho fuck, and he wanted to lay the rules. So they went back to the bedroom on their honeymoon night. He took off his underwear. He threw it to her. He said, now try these on, bitch. She tries them on. They fall to the ground. She pulls them back up. They fell back to the ground. Pulls it back up. Falls to the ground. She says, I can't wear these. He says, that's fucking right. Don't you ever try, I'm the man, I'm the boss, I'm wearing, wearing the pants in this family. She stuck off her panties, she says, here, took him, he says, try those on. So he tries to get him up, he can't get him past his knees, they start ripping, he just takes some throws, I can't get into these. She says, and you won't till you change your fucking attitude, buddy. <laughs> This guy was a guy working in a laundromat. He was a soap seller. Soap selling son of a bitch. This lady comes walking in. He's got four buckets in front of him giving a demonstration. He says, ma'am, I'll give you a $50 bill if I can't get your blouse clean with new soup for suds. Well, she took off her blouse and he went, whoa, she, whoa, she, whoa, she. <laughs> Big Suds is here. Rinsy, 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 clean and clear. Smells like roses. <laughs> says, I'll give you a $50 bill if I can't get your pants clean with new soup for Suds. And she took off her pants and he went, whoa, she, whoa, she, whoa, she. Big Suds is here. Rinsy, 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 clean and clear. Smells like roses. Ma'am, I'll give you a $100 bill if I can't get your panties clean with no soup or suds. Well, she took off her panties and he went, whoa, she, whoa, she, whoa, she. Big suds is here. Rinsy, 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 clean and clear. Whoa, she, whoa, she, whoa, she. <laughs> Guy takes his wife to the doctor for an examination. Doctor comes out of the examining room. He says, well, I got some bad news for you. He says, I've never seen a case like this. I've been a doctor for 20 years. He says, she just got AIDS or she's got Alzheimer's disease. <laughs> that guy says, well, there's quite a bit of fucking difference there, don't you think, God damn it? <laughs> Between AIDS and Alzheimer's disease, what do you think I ought to do? And he says, well, if I were you, I'd take her to the country kick her out of the car, she finds her way home, don't fuck her. <laughs> My, but you're a sick group, I'll tell you that. This lady calls up her doctor. She said, doctor, 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 I am sorry. But these hormone pills you've been giving me, Buster, are just a little bit too strong. She said, I got hair growing all over my chest. Doctor said, how far down does the hair go? She said, all the way down to my dick, and that's another thing I want to talk to you. This guy goes to his doctor. 
He was very, very well hung. He walked up to the doctor. He said, Doc, Doc, you had a stuttering problem. He said, Doc, 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 I got a big, big, big fucking dick. <laughs> he proceeded to go on. They had a stuttering problem because of the fact that he was so well endowed. He was embarrassed. Every time a girl would meet him, they'd go back to his place. She'd find out how big he was, and she'd just laugh at him. He said, well, the only cure for that is to cut it off. He said, cut, 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 cut it off. <laughs> so the doctor took him to surgery. Boom, it was a miracle. The guy's voice changed like that. Next thing you know, he's very, very successful. He's going to all these bars, he's meeting these girls left and right. He's a stud on Main Street, but he takes these girls home. They find out he's got nothing there, and they just laughed at him. So he went back to the doctor. He said, doctor, I think I made a terrible mistake. I want you to sew that thing back on. And the doctor said, fuck, 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 fuck you. <laughs> Little boy, about five years old, very innocent child, wakes up one morning, decides he wants a glass of water. He's walking down the hallway towards the kitchen. All of a sudden, his father comes out of the bedroom on with nothing on but a hard on and a big red rubber. <laughs> the little boy's scared. He says, Dad, what are you trying to do? The dad, not wanting to scare the child and explain intercourse to him, says, I'm looking for that pesky mouse. <laughs> Kid says, what are you going to do, fuck him? <laughs> Took my little boy to see Snow White. Now, for those of you people in this audience who have never taken a child to see a Sunday afternoon matinee, you're all going to do it. Some of you probably already have. Let me set the scene. So the rest you know what you're in for. The big moment comes, ladies and gentlemen, Sunday afternoon, 1 p.m. We're in a station wagon. We're headed for the mall. I'm already pissed. <laughs> You don't need a slurpee, now just sit down! <laughs> we get to the mall, we buy our tickets, we walk into the theater, I look around, I realize that there's three billion kids and two dads. <laughs> Very sentimental part of the film, ladies and gentlemen, Snow White is laying there asleep. The music's playing. The dwarves are crying. Little squirrels are crying. <laughs> Little turtles are crying. Two dads are crying. <laughs> because Prince Charming walks up to Snow White, lifts up her head, is just about ready to kiss her and save her love. And my boy stands up and yells, Go for it, dude! <laughs> Party! Kid behind says, fuck her, I did. <laughs> but he's a good boy. And I'm glad I have a boy because my uncle has three daughters. They're all in high school. He has not slept in five years. <laughs> Every time he closes his eyes, he has a dream of a boy pulling up in a van that says, Muff Diver. <laughs> Kid's got a t-shirt on it says Macon Bacon. You know, like, is your daughter home? <laughs> I think it's harder bringing up a boy that is a girl, because let's face it, girls are people. Boys aren't. <laughs> but we're proud of it. Example. Remember those slumber parties as a kid? You go to a girl slumber party? You got 12 girls, they all got their jammies on. They're all arm in arm in the same bed talking about hunks. They're calling them up, hanging up, and just giggling. <laughs> they got pizza, they got fudge, they got brownies. They're on diets. <laughs> they got a poster of David Cassie and the monkeys. They're calling up hunks, hanging up, and just giggling. <laughs> they got their hair in curlers, fingernail polish on at midnight. They're wearing lipstick, they're making ice cubes out of Tracy's training, bro. <laughs> they're calling up hunks, hanging up, and just giggling. <laughs> and when they fall asleep, bless their hearts, all 12 of these girls are arm in arm in the same bed. It's a very beautiful thing. <laughs> they go to a boy slumber party. <laughs> they're farting. <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> One kid wants to light them. Because his dad showed him how. <laughs> the 
sleepy kids have their fingers in warm water. <laughs> when they fall asleep, it's 10 feet away from each other. It's like, Don't nobody touch me, queers. <laughs> back off, fag bait, back off. I could never understand why little boys call each other queers. I mean, you're 10 years old. I was never at a slumber party where a bunch of kids were like going, shh, okay, listen. Let's wait till Billy falls asleep. And then we'll fuck him. <laughs> oh, last night after the show, this girl came up to me and invited me back to her apartment. I figured, hey. <laughs> Can't be rude. <laughs> I don't want to say this girl was faster forward, ladies and gentlemen. You make your own decision here. But we're in her apartment for five minutes. Five minutes! And she dimmed the lights, put on some soft music, poured a couple of glasses of wine. I noticed mine was a lot fuller than hers was. <laughs> she very slowly proceeded to rip off all of her clothes. She jumped on the couch, started masturbating like some kind of wild, possessed, fevered, horny fucking pig. <laughs> I was watching her. I thought, hey, <laughs> if I play my cards right. <laughs> I could be kissing this girl. <laughs> I like middle-aged women. They're the best, though, huh? Middle-aged women? Oh. 14, 15, 16, girls. <laughs> girls you could talk to. <laughs> Did you get the Journey album yet or what? <laughs> Dating's a lot of fun. Double dates are weird. I had a blind date one night. That was pretty weird. She kept knocking shit over and shit. <laughs> Doesn't taste like a fudge sickle to me. <laughs> so lick it before it melts, honey. Lick it before it melts. But double dates are weird. I don't know if you people know this, but how come it's on a double date when a woman has to go to the bathroom, boom, they both got to go. Maybe it's magic, I don't know. You never see two guys go together. You never hear like, Chuck, let's go take a piss. See, when guys are in the bathroom together, you know what we're doing, huh, guys? Comparing. That's right, girls. You ask any guy in this room. If he's lying, he's dying. But you get five guys lined up against that urinal. I don't care if you got the Pope, the President, and three Boy Scouts. They're checking it out. Like, hey, 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 I don't like to brag. Boom! You can pound nails with this son of a bitch. You guys want to help me ring it out down there? No, thank you, Father. I think we'll pass on that one now. So women got too much class. You never hear women bragging how big they are, do you? <laughs> never see a bunch of girls at a picnic someplace going, Ethel! <laughs> it's a wonder my guts don't fall down. <laughs> Herbert lost his Timex up there last. <laughs> Fell out, it was still working. <laughs> it took a dick and it's still ticking. <laughs> This is Cameron Swayze. It took a dickin' and kept on ticking. It did, it really did. Well, guys do brag. You ever brag about yours? Sure, fucking A. <laughs> brag about yours? Fucking A. You brag about yours? No. <laughs> Got one of them teeny wee wees. This guy, you gotta put your finger in your butt for your dick to pop out. <laughs> like, boom! I told you I had one. Now <laughs> stay. But guys do brag. You ever read those letters of penthouse for them? That'll prove it to you. There's some sick individuals out there. <laughs> These letters are so graphic and unbelievable. You don't even want to touch the pages and shit. <laughs> he did what? The who? Where? When? It was plugged in in the moon soon season? Are you kidding me? Shit. These letters are so graphic and unbelievable. It's everything pleasant. Is there anything like, 
It was our honeymoon night. Nancy and I made passionate love. I hope we live happily ever after. No! <clears throat> These letters are always written by some guy who lives in a closet in a commando outfit. <laughs> His letters are always like, I unleashed <laughs> my blood-gorging, pulsating, throbbing hunk of 12-inch love sausage <laughs> and gently plowed <laughs> into her waiting honey pot. <laughs> What's a honey pot? <laughs> What's this guy fucking, Yogi Bear? This guy, hey, boo-boo. <laughs> Bigger than the Everest Bear. Oh, Yogi, I don't think we should. <laughs> I don't think we should. I don't think we should. That's weird stuff. Oh, having sex with animals. Reminds me of a sheep herder joke. There was a sheep herder and his young apprentice. And this sheep herder was pushing these sheep all the way across the Rocky Mountains. It took about three weeks. Every night after herding sheep or whatever they call it, this old sheep herder would just eat his dinner up, throw it on his plate, run out and grab himself a sheep and just butt fuck it. <laughs> This young apprentice was thinking, that's pretty weird. <laughs> Next day, same thing, they'd finish eating their dinner, the old guy throw it on his plate, go grab himself a sheep and just butt fuck it. <laughs> About three weeks go by, the young guy said, well, maybe that's not so weird after all. <laughs> One night after dinner, the old guy throws down his plate, go grab some of sheep and just starts butt fucking. The young guy says, God damn it, I missed my girlfriend. He runs out there. Pulls down his pants, grabs his sheep, starts rubbing himself against his sheep, turns it around, rubs himself up the other way, turns it around, rubs it up, kicks the sheep in the ass, says, fuck it, I can't get a hard on with these goddamn sheep. <laughs> the old guy grabs the sheep by the ears, lifts him up, says, no wonder, he got the ugliest one. <laughs> I like being a comic. I wasn't always a comic. Before I did this, I was a house painter for five years. Five years. <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever finish that fucking house. <laughs> My ex-wife didn't want me to be a comedian. She said, John, I want you to have a real job. I want to be like normal people on weekends. I want to go camping. I said, camping? <laughs> You put a Hilton in the forest, I'll go camping. <laughs> My idea of rough it, it's three days in Vegas with $1,000 to gamble with. <laughs> she said, we'll get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and catch fish. I said, 5 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> I'm not done puking until 10. <laughs> I'm on vacation, I'm having fun, you know. I wake up, my glass still has ice cubes in it. <laughs> She was a professional gymnast. It was really weird. We'd finish making love, I'd ask her how it was, she'd hold up scorecards. <laughs> One time I got tens all the way across, thought I was some hot stuff. Found out later I'd been disqualified for an illegal dismount. <laughs> Those backflips are a bitch, I'll tell you. I almost poked my fucking eyeball out one night. Still sore on rainy days. <laughs> We didn't get along too well. One day when she was sitting on the, the curb there eating a pizza, she had no underwear on. And I said, what are you doing eating pizza out here? You got no underwear on. She said, keeps the flies off the pizza. <laughs> All right, back off, back off. They all can't be gems, goddammit. <laughs> I got rid of her, too. I'll never forget the first night we made love. That was a special night. She had a pair of leather pants on. Oh, I don't think the cow wore them that tight. <laughs> but we made love that night. It was a very special night. It was 3 o'clock in the morning. 
I had a teeny apartment in a very quiet residential neighborhood. But we started riding the old baloney pony. <laughs> we were slamming some fucking ham, goddammit. Her head came up, her eyeballs bulged out of her head, and she started screaming, I'm coming, soldier! I'm coming! Oh, shut up. It's three o'clock in the morning. I live in an apartment in a very quiet, residential neighborhood. <laughs> well, she's doing this for 40 minutes. <laughs> she's buffing the fucking helmet, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> she's got that German soldier marching down. <laughs> her head came up, her eyeballs bulged out, and she's screaming, I'm coming, I'm coming! I looked out in the front lawn, I got 10 neighbors out there. Make her come, goddammit! Make her come! I gotta be at work at 6.30! Make her come! I got two kids wanna know where she's going! Make her come! Well, she's dead now. Uh, Corner called it a boating accident. <laughs> I used to work as a school teacher. That's like to leave your kid with me for six hours a day. <laughs> Herbert, I'm taking him out of that fucking school. <laughs> I had a bunch of fourth graders. They're a pretty good class. I told them one day I'd give them a chance for a day off the school. They were really excited. They were sitting in their desk with anticipation in their eyeballs. I said, I'm going to tell you kids a phrase. You tell me who said that phrase, what year that phrase was said. You got Monday off of school. I looked at the class and I said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And no one knew the answer except this one little Japanese boy way in the back waving his hand. I said, Yashimuru. <laughs> because that was his name. <laughs> And he stood up very proudly. He said, most honorable, 36th president, John F. Kennedy, 1961. I said, very good. You have Monday off of school. Enjoy it. But the rest of the class, I says, aren't we a little ashamed here? <laughs> We've been American citizens all of our lives, and no one, no one knew the answer to this phrase. This Japanese boy has been in our country for two years. Two years! And he knew the answer just like that. I think we all should be a little ashamed. I went back to my desk, and one of the kids goes, hey, fuck the Japanese. <laughs> I said, who said that? <laughs> Little boy goes, Lee Iacocca, 1980, <laughs> see you Tuesday. <laughs> I'll never forget that child's name. His name was Archibald Barisal. <laughs> the worst student of them all. Remember when you were in school, there was one kid in your class that shall we call him a prick? <laughs> Archibald Barisal. One day we were studying phonics. I said, Archibald, can you say your name in phonetic syllables? He said, hell no. I need an example. I said, fair enough. <laughs> Looked around the room. I said, Mary Smith. And Mary Smith stood straight up because she's an A student. She said, my name is Mary Smith. You got your M-A, got your May, got your R-Y, got your E, got your Mary, got your S-M-I-T-H, you got your Smith. You got your E Smith, you got your May Smith, you got your Mary Smith. I said, very, very good. I said, Archibald? He said, hell no. <laughs> I need an example. I said, fair enough. <laughs> Looked around the room. I said, Johnny Jones. And Johnny Jones stood straight up because he's an A student. Actually a D, but we'll make him an A student for this joke. <laughs> he said, my name is Johnny Jones. You got your J-O-H-N, you got your John. You got your N-Y, you got your knee, you got your John E. You got your J-O-N-E-S, you got your Jones. You got your knee Jones, you got your John Jones, you got your John E. Jones. I said, very, very good. I said, Archibald, he said, you asked for it, fucker. <laughs> so my name is Archibald Barisal. You got your A-R-C-H, you got your arch. You got your I, you got your arch I. You got your B-A-L-D, you got your bald. You got your eyeballs, you got your arch balls, you got your arch eyeball. You got your B-A-R-E, you got your bear. You got your bald bear, you got your eyeball bear, you got your arch eyeball bear. 
You got your ASS, you got your ass. You got your bear ass. You got your bald bear ass. You got your eyeball bear ass. You got your arch eyeball bear ass. You got your OL, got your roll, got your asshole. You got your bear asshole. You got your bald bear asshole. You got your eyeball bear asshole. You got your arch eyeball bear asshole. I said very, very good. Thank you so very, very much.